Welcome to today's 3D print mega print episode. <laughs> Got some mega prints. I mean, you see how gigantic this thing is. Yeah, no, this is just a base print on my the new CR10 I set up last night, and it's airtight, which means it's watertight. Very cool. I just happened to print it, so why not? I'm going to show it to you. <laughs> All right, on to the good stuff. You guys saw my my Voyager, and you saw the shuttlecraft, and you saw D Space Nine. So using the Arbogene, um filament from Zyro, because it actually matches the color they like to use in the series. Um, the older Star Trek series called Enterprise had some interesting Vulcan starships, and this is a print of one of them. It is just barely fitting in the frame there. That is cool. One of their ring ships. I um, printed this in two parts. I noticed that this part here stuck out, so I lowered this through the print bed until that was sitting right on the print bed, and I printed that, and then I flipped it over, and I printed the other half, and then just glued the two halves together. Problem solved. The details are amazing. Really nice. There we go. Yeah, look at some of the nice details on the model. This is printed on a CR-10, of course. Not bad. I like it. It's a pretty model. And it's big. How big is this thing? It's pretty huge. Where is my tape measure? I just had it. There it is. It is... Sixty-one centimeters long. Or two feet on the dot. So a two foot model. This is printed to max height. And then this was the remainder, whatever it was. Um, so that is as large as I can make it. Well, I could make it bigger if I chopped off a section of the nose and then kept enlarging it until the ring hit 12 inches or this hit the max size, but there was no reason to. I'd rather just have two prints and the extra six inches doesn't make a difference to me. But very cool. That came out nice. Eventually, I'm going to hang these up in here. So I love my little starships. They're nice. But Thingiverse link down below. Very cool model. Easy to print. Um, I only have infill here to handle this curve because this curve gets pretty flat right here. Without infill, this would probably not attach properly. So I have just a little bit of infill for that section of curve right there. Nowhere else. And then on this half of the model, since it's only about this thick here, um, I did infill for this first section here just to make sure all these surface supports would close so that there wouldn't be no holes. There we go. So there wouldn't be no holes in the top surface because remember it prints like this. So if you don't have infill here, the filament's going to drop in when it tries to print that section of the model. By doing that, it printed perfectly. But nice model, decent amount of detail. Not as much detail as the Voyager model, but uh, most of the alien ships don't have that much detail, so this one's pretty nicely detailed. And I like it. And I have one more. You guys saw this one coming. A little sneak peek. Well, actually, you didn't see the sneak peek. Well, you did, yeah. So this will be posting on Friday. So you will see the sneak peek today when the video posts. I think. I think I put it in today's video. You got just a little tiny peek of it. I have not actually watched the show, so I've never actually seen this, but. Game of Thrones has dragons, or someone told me it's a wyvern. Uh, but one of them's called Drogon. And I was like, that's a luby quality dragon. That's gonna have to get the 3D Solutech Ultra PLA in yellow. It is 12 inches tall, 12 inches long, and nine and a half inches wide. This critter is cool. The details in his chest and his skin surface are very impressive. Get you some light. There we go. His head is very reminiscent of the raptors from Jurassic Park. That is cool. 
Now, I printed this with no support, which caused this. You can see the errors on the bottom there. Very minor. I didn't realize that these sections actually got pretty flat. And because they were flat, there was nothing to hold on to, but it's very minor. It's underneath. You don't see it. I don't care. If I were to ever reprint this, I would probably add just a little bit of support there just to improve the structural integrity of the model at that level. It's not required. Oh, so my skirt is still on there. Um, because of how big it was, I had the skirt pretty tight to the model to make sure it didn't go off the bed. Um, the other error part is the feet printed fine. I didn't have to worry about those. Um, because I used no infill, there's two areas in the model that are pretty flat on top. Three, actually. You got slight holes in the head there that you can barely see. The top of his shoulder blades here. And the top of his tail where it stops curving down and starts to curve back up again. Those are flat areas that would normally require infill to hold it when it tries to print across that flat area. As long as you have an angle, the filament will hold on to its own perimeter. That's why I use four perimeters, four shells. But those areas were flat. But I took a gamble that they would be good enough, and they were. Those errors are not visible, and they're minor. The model came out great. The tail did break off, not while printing. It, it cracked while printing. I heard it, but it stayed in place, so I let it go. So I just had to reinforce the crack with a little bit of glue. That's the nature of the Ultra PLA. It's a little um, weak on the layer bonding, but the resulting prints are so worth it. I mean, this is beautiful. I will happily place this alongside Adelinda and Aria. And they will be happy to have a wyvern amongst their mix. I might have to print another one now, because someone made an updated model with the proper scorpion tail. And I want the scorpion tail now. I know why he took it off, because it wouldn't print. If you put a scorpion tail there, it wouldn't print. But um, I'm okay with that. I, would, I, I want the scorpion tail. So I might reprint them to the other model that someone made on Thingiverse, Scorpion Tail. I'm assuming the actual TV critter hmm. has a scorpion tail, and that's why he added it. But, oh, beautiful model. And this gives you an example of, um, oh, you can see where it cracked, by the way. It actually shifted things a little bit. You can see the little shift line there. I don't even know if you can see that in the video, but it's okay. It doesn't, it doesn't detract from the model. It's fine. You got to expect small issues when you print with this PLA, but it looks so pretty unfinished. If you're going to finish the model, never use this PLA. But if you just want to print a nice model and you don't plan to actually do any kind of finishing, then this PLA gives you some truly stunning results. I love the textures in his neck and skin. The texture detail is just very cool. I love this model. He's a cool looking critter. Arr. That's it. That's it for the big prints. I got the, the rest of the printers have been printing rocket parts. Um, I decided to print the giant octopus in pink, so that's going now on the new CR10. It'll be its, um, I'll pop its um, Z height cherry. It'll be its first big print. It won't be all the way up, it'll only be about halfway. So probably 10, 11 inches high but it'll be its first big print. This one does have infill, just because I think um, there's a couple of areas like this that would require it on larger scale that I can get away with when I print small, that I can't when I print large, and I want this one to look nice because unlike the dragon, it won't be hidden between two wings. It'll be very visible, so this one has infill. I have a shoe printing on one of the printers. It's just some shoe I found on my mini factory. It looked like it was relatively simple and had a decent design, so I'm trying to scale it and see if it'll fit. So I'll, I'll, I really do want to print a pair of shoes. I don't know why, I just want to print a pair of shoes. <laughs> I just think that'd be neat to walk around all day in a pair of shoes that I printed on my printer. So these are just PLA, uh, so they wouldn't, probably, probably wouldn't be very comfortable to walk in, but um, good enough to test for fit and scale and to see how much I have to modify it. I can't do a shoe on the E10, 270 millimeters is not enough. Um, it would have to be like a, a very thin shoe and I could do it on an angle because I really need 29 centimeters of interior length for my foot. So I don't 
think there's enough space, but the CR-10 has enough space if I do one shoe at a time. Um, the Owl is almost done, so the next Mega Printisode will have the Owl in it, and it is coming out stunning. I, I still can't believe that an ANET printer is printing that nice. When you see this print, it's going to blow your mind. It is... I'm tempted to say it's perfect. I, I don't see, at least from a distance, I don't see an error anywhere. It's it, The surface is gorgeous. I'll show you what I did to get that. I think the, um, the Z-Rods were binding a little bit, so I loosened them. I raised the gantry all the way to the top with the, the rod holders loose. And then you know, jiggled them until they sat in the middle part where they're supposed to, and then tightened them down. And now the gantry moves up and down a lot more smoothly. And the print is truly coming out staggering. It's it's very, very nice. I think you guys are going to like that. I like my E10. It's a good printer. I mean, it's not a great printer. It's not a CR10. <laughs> you know, if, if someone said, would you like an E10 or a CR10? Um, hello, are you stupid? Of course I'll take a CR10. <laughs> but it's not a bad printer. And it's quiet. Not as quiet as the Ender 2, but it's quiet once you replace the fans, especially if you don't run it fast and slow. It's an impressive printer. Oh, oh I have yawning so much. Um, it's nice. It just does a good job. Oh, I printed another Marvin after I re-leveled the printer after installing my Free Essentials mod, which is a video you'll be able to see tomorrow. Um, that's it. You guys have a great day. I still have to fix the Maker Select, and now I have to fix the Wano Duplicator i3. I'm guessing loose power wire somewhere seems to be a pretty common problem that results in what's happening. So I just stopped using the printer and put it out of surface until I can fix it right, so I don't burn nothing up, because I do like those printers. Even though they don't give me the kind of print results I get out of these printers, they're good workhorses. They can just crank out parts. They hold their bed level good once you modify them with the Z-Bracing and the white plate. I did finally find the Y plate that I got for the um, for the Y not duplicator i3, so I'll be installing that soon. I already have one on my Maker Select, but I never got around to doing it for the the i3. I've also got my 200 by 220 glass plate with Print and Z attached, ready to go. So once I get the new Y plate installed, I'll put the new print surface on the Maker, Select, the Maker Select, and I've got the um, upgraded hot end for the Flexion. So that might actually become my high temperature machine to play with. And um, it looks like I'm getting a a new printer from GearBest. It sounds like they're going to send me a new printer to play with. It's interesting. It's like an FX5 or something like that. It's cool because um, it's, like, it's like a... Uh, Maker Select duplicator print volume, a little bigger actually, 220, 220, 220. It's about 275, but um, it's well built. It's built like the CR10s. It's got the V slot rails and the V wheels, and um, it's not made by Creality though. It's made by someone else, but it's using that same tech, you know, using the this type of rail and wheel system, which is why I picked it. It's, you know, I need to review printers that um, are not only, you know, something interesting for you guys, but also useful for me. Um, so, I mean, if the printer's not going to be useful to me, it's not going to get a great review, because what am I going to do with it? You know, so this will be interesting. Um, I could have gotten the i3 Mega, but plenty of people have already reviewed that, and it's got a relatively small print volume. And um, I think it's like... Um, 200 by 205 by 150 or something like that, or 180. So I'd rather have the 220, 220, 220, and I would rather have the tried and true, loved V slot, V wheel um, assembly structure because that appears to work very well. So far, every single printer I've gotten with the V slot construction has been amazing. So I'd rather continue on that train. In fact, if I ever design my own printer, which I might eventually, because I think that might be fun, because I'd like to make a huge one. <laughs> Even if it takes forever to print, I don't care. I want a huge printer. I want to print, you know, like a meter cubed. I think that would be amazing. But that's 
long time down the road because that's going to take time and money, neither of which I have right now. Uh, as usual, subscribe, tell your friends about me, say, ask them, hey, if you like them, subscribe to them. Okay? Um, I have affiliate links down below. Once again, I'm going to explain what affiliate links are. What affiliate links are is a special link that has a code in it that tells the provider that you came from me. And the provider rewards me uh, with finished sales with money. I actually get money. So, for example, I'm um, looking at over the last two months getting about 300 bucks from Amazon from these affiliate links. It's not a lot of money, but it will help me to buy this stuff. You know, that's almost enough to buy another CR10, you know. Another 100 bucks and I can buy a CR, another CR10 or uh, the new new one that comes out or whatever. You know, I would love, I would die to get one of those TiVo Little Monsters. Oh my god, 340 millimeter by 500 millimeter print volume cylinder. I can make some nice rockets with that. <laughs> I can, I'm, I'm drooling over the concept of that, but that's a thousand dollar printer, so that's a long way off. I contacted TiVo, but they says, yeah, you need like 10,000 subscribers if you want us to send you one of those. <laughs> hey, you know, it's, it's an expensive printer, you know, they're going to want to make sure they get a return. If they're going to send you a free thousand dollar printer, they want a return on their money, okay? Um, now, the Amazon affiliate links, just give me money. It's usually 50 cents to a dollar per sale. So, you know, you go buy 30, 40 dollars worth of filament, I get a buck. But that adds up. It costs you nothing, and I get to make money. So the money I made in June, I'll get at the end of September, and the money I make this month, I'll get at the end of October. It's like a 60, 90 day delay between when you make the sales and when you get the sales, I guess in case there's returns or stuff like that. Um, now, the gear best links work a little differently. Um, they have a dual purpose. First, I get money. I assume I get money. My little affiliate account says I got like $47 coming to me. I don't know how they're gonna pay that to me. I'm, I'm not gonna tell you how that breaks down because it's probably proprietary information. But um, it's not bad. I'm not going to say no to it, that's for sure. I need the money. But um, but the trick with GearBest, though, is i got to sell stuff to get them to send me more stuff. Because if they're not selling stuff for me, then why would they bother sending me stuff? Okay. Apparently, the couple sales I got were enough that they're going to send me another printer. So i got to try to make sure I pick the right printer, the one that's going to be good. Because if it's junk, I'm going to tell you it's junk. <laughs> Because you, 1,200 people who are currently subscribed to me, are more important to me than GearBest. I need GearBest. I would really like them to keep sending me printers because that gives me more stuff to make content for. And also, more printers to print stuff. <laughs> I mean, who's going to say no to more printers? I mean, hello. But um, it also needs to be a printer that I think you guys will enjoy, that I think will be useful, that I think will be good, which is why I picked this printer, um, this FZ5, whatever it is. But um, if I don't sell stuff, then they won't send me printers because there's no return to them. There's no give and take. You know, if they're sending me, it's going to cost them 200 bucks to send me a printer, you know, because they, they lost a piece of inventory. They had to buy that. The manufacturer didn't give it to them for free. You know, they took one of their inventory and said, here, it's yours, free. And they're hoping that they're going to make more than the cost of that printer back in sales. So, do you have to click on these links? No, of course not. That is totally optional. I will continue making this content for as long as I can for no cost. That's why I don't monetize on YouTube because what am I going to do? Make five bucks a month from YouTube? I mean, I don't get enough views. If I start getting hundreds of thousands of views, okay, I'll maybe start monetizing with YouTube. But until that happens, there's no point. Um, but um, if you do decide you want one, if you want a CR10, if you want an Ender, if you want a Maker Select, if you want an ANA E10, I would appreciate it if you went to one of my links and used it. If your friend wants one of these printers, say, hey, go watch this video, click on that link, you know, let them get the printer. It costs you nothing, it doesn't add to the cost of the printer, but it puts a little cash in my pocket, and it allows me to keep getting these printers to review for you guys. So, that's it. That's all. You guys have. Oh, and the Amazon affiliate links are interesting. If I provide you a link to, say, Esun PLA Pro, which is my favorite filament, bar none, I love the stuff. Uh, it's just. It, it prints like butter. You can remove it from your troubleshooting equation because the, the filament is not the problem if you're using Esun PLA Pro. Unless you get a bad roll, but I've never gotten a bad roll yet. 
Except when I ordered the 3mm roll and I was supposed to get 1.75. That was my fault. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, this doesn't fit. But anyway, um, even if you don't order what I link to, if you order something else, I still get credit. As long as you order it within 24 hours of clicking on my link or before you click on someone else's affiliate link, I get credit for it. I mean, I got, I, I think I made like $10 because somebody bought an Amazon Echo. I don't have a link to an Amazon Echo, but they clicked on my link and they were browsing around Amazon and they bought the Echo and I got credit because I sent them to Amazon. So even if you don't want to buy what I am reviewing in my videos, because I typically only put links to stuff that um, I actually have, stuff that I'm using. So like, you know, I put a link to the soldering, the soldering kit because I bought it, I'm using it. So I put a link to it, right? And I'll have a review for that soon too. It's actually a nice kit. It's a cheap kit. 17 bucks, 18 bucks, but it's nice. It's a, it's a good value for the money. Um, so tell them, hey, go here, click on his link and buy something. Why not? I appreciate it. You guys have a great day. I have uh, one, two, three more mega prints coming for the next print episode. So that'll probably be Monday or Tuesday. And I might print something else in the meantime. We'll see, because these are all going to take a while. The owl's almost done. I'm almost tempted to wait around until it's done so I can get something else going on it. <laughs> I really hate it when I leave and the printers aren't printing something. It's like, I want you printing something. Make me stuff. Make me cool things. Because there is... A lot of people don't realize just how amazing stuff like this is. I mean, these are parts to my rocket. These are parts I designed. Okay, so these are my creation. I didn't download these on Thingiverse. Matter of fact, you can't even find these on Thingiverse because I'm going to sell these. Because I'm going to hope to. Um... There is just, have you ever bought something, you know, you, you bought something and you wished, I can, wish I could change this, wish I could change that, make this a little different, you know, I would have done this a little better. Now you can. So, you know, most nose cones have a straight edge, and I realized, okay, if I put a bevel on it, a chamfer, it would be a lot easier to insert into the rocket. So, I did it. It now has that. There is just something mesmerizing about the idea that I can... It's very Star Trek-ish. It's very cool in this way that I can have an idea in my head. I can then sit down in front of my computer, design that idea, and then this machine will take that idea, that ethereal, non-corporeal, non-existent in the physical realm of this universe thing that's only in my head and make it into a real object. So I went from idea in my head to something I can hold in my hand and use to something I can fly a rocket. This rocket will fly up into the air and I designed this in my head and then had a machine make my design real. There's just something... The first time you do it, even if it's a stupid little bracket to fix something on your fridge or a knob for your oven or something to hold a picture on the wall, something silly, you know, whatever silly little print you come up with, even, you know, you know critters and stuff like that. There's just something about making real, a tangible real object, and not handmade. Not, um, okay, there, okay, there's a difference between handmade, what I make, and handmade, what a person who's a professional makes. Because the professional is like the 3D printer. He is trained and skilled enough to make real something that's in the imagination. I can't make one of these. I, I mean, it would take me months, if not longer, assuming I could even afford it, to buy a lathe, learn how to use it, put material in it, and produce this part. The 3D printer removes the physical skill aspect of the problem. You know, I want to make a nose cone. Okay, well now i got to learn how to use a CNC machine or a lathe. Okay? A threading machine or whatever, or I don't know, whatever the machines you need for these. A bandsaw, a scroll saw, a, a miter saw, and um, 
an injection molding, a vacuum forming machine. These are all skills you have to learn. Well now, with 3D printing, you can take a mental skill, a skill that's malleable and flexible, not a physical skill. Once you learn how to use a lathe, you can make some amazing things. I've got guys I watch on YouTube that make stuff on their lathes that blow my mind. I mean, it's simple, it's not hard, but the skill to execute it to get that kind of result takes years to get. Well now, you can design something in 3D and a machine has the skill to make the part perfect. This allows people like me to generate cool stuff in our heads and make them real, but not just real. I mean, I can take a piece of wood, and I can take a saw and a chisel, and I can hack it away, and it'll be roughly nose cone shaped, but it won't be nice. This is nice, and I designed this. There's something just very tea, Earl Grey hot about that. <laughs> There's just something Star Trek replicator about that. It's just amazing that I can design something in my mind and make it real, and not just real, but nice. I mean, that, this is why people like Luby and people like the guy who made this love it when people post pictures of their work because they design this stuff in their mind and then it gets made real. And there's a, there's a massive amount of pleasure and satisfaction involved in that process of watching that happen and 3D printing makes that possible. That's, that's just cool. That's why I love these things so much. Not only can I possibly make a little money out of it, but just the, the fact that I can make um, stuff that I imagine real is just amazing. So, I hope you guys enjoy. I hope you keep enjoying these videos. I hope they're helpful to you. You guys have a great day. See you on the next episode.